Hey, New Song EM, I want to welcome you to our online service today. We are very thankful that you were able to join us, and uh, you, I hope that you're enjoying your time at home with your friends and family um, watching this and being encouraged and exhorted in Christ. Uh, we've been hearing a lot of great stuff from um, our house church leaders and just other people, how uh, you guys are really staying faithful to the Lord and gathering together to read scripture, to have prayer meetings, and also to worship God together. Um, I hope that um, there are a lot of you here um, with us, uh, joining us online today to worship God together. Um, before we get into our worship, there are a couple announcements I would like to make. Uh, the first thing is that we have a new song email list um, where we will be sending out a lot of our updates about current, what the current event of what's going on right now, along with some um, news about in, uh, encouraging news that we would like to send you all, whether it's letters or whether it's uh, just general prayer requests that we want to pray together as a church that we have. Uh, the second thing is that we also have moved our online, um, our offerings and tithings online, uh, which is through bill pay. Uh, so uh, through those emails that you've been receiving, there's actually instructions on there on how to sign up for bill pay. So please make sure to do that and continue in your offerings and tithings to the Lord. Uh, the last thing is that please let us know how we can help you. If you have any questions or comments, um, if you have any uh, prayer requests or any needs, please don't hesitate to act, ask us and we'll make sure that your needs are taken care of.
loves hearing us. The Father turns his face away as wounds which mar the chosen one bring many sons to glory.
Lord, we just thank you, Lord, that no matter what is happening in this world right now, Lord, no matter what the world throws our way, we thank you that you are good, Lord, that you are faithful and that you forever will be. Lord, I pray that that faithfulness would be something that would um, just be something that we can really hold on to. Lord, um, we just thank you for always being by our side. Lord, I pray that um, no matter how hard things may feel, that we know that we can rely on you. So we just thank you for all that we, you do. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good afternoon, New Song English Ministry. We're glad that you can join us today for worship. We hope and pray that you guys are doing well, that you're staying healthy, um, and that you guys are, are seeking to stay connected during this time. We know that we're um, called to shelter and home, but at the same time, as one church, as one body, we understand that we need to stay connected, that we need to stay as one, um, and that we need to continue to build on our community in the unity of uh, Christ that we have. So we, we are hoping and praying that as we worship together and as this week continues on, that you guys would continue to stay connected. Today's passage is Mark chapter 11, verses 1 to 10. Uh, Mark chapter 11, verses 1 to 10. Uh, what we're going to be going into is uh, this idea of Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. Uh, today is Passion or Palm Sunday, uh, the beginning of Passion Week, the Sunday before um, uh, Easter Sunday. Right? So we are, are celebrating Jesus' triumphal entry, the king, into his holy and royal city during this time. Uh, so if you guys have turned to Mark chapter 11, uh, we're going to be reading this out loud together in one voice. And in honor of reading God's word, I'm going to ask that you guys rise uh, and stand on your feet. All right, Mark chapter 11, verses 1 to 10, out loud in one voice. Ready, begin. Now when they drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village in front of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find a colt tied on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Say, The Lord has need of it, and will send it back here immediately. And they went away and found a colt tied at a door outside in the street, and they untied it. And some of those standing there said to them, What are you doing, untying the colts? And they told them what Jesus had said, and they let them go. And they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it. And he sat on it, and many spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut from the fields. And those who went before and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming king of our father David. Hosanna in the highest. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, as we go into your word today, we pray that you would open up our hearts, open up our minds and our ears to hear your word, but also that it would transform us that it would transform us from the inside out, that our lifestyles would change. And although uh, we are currently in a situation that might not allow for us to do as much or, or be as free, we pray that you would allow us to find ways to serve you, to serve your kingdom, and to love your people. Father, we thank you for this word. We thank you for your grace during this time. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As you guys all know, I'm a big sports guy, and, and with this um, idea of uh, the king coming into the, his, his royal city, uh, it brings to mind for me the idea of uh, the closing pitcher in baseball. Now, with, in baseball, it's a long game. There's at least nine innings, and from there, it, it may extend based on the score. But there's this idea that as pitchers come out, they throw their pitches and then people score and there's a lot going on. One thing that happens is at the very end of the game, uh, there's, this, uh, there's a pitcher, a specific pitcher, known to have some of the, 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 the most, the nastiest throws, uh, known to have some of those, the, the, mo the fastest fastballs. And these pitchers, they're called the closers because they have the best stuff and they close out games. With this idea, um, many people, when they look and see that there's, they have a good closer, many times they're brought to peace. They're brought to security because they know that whatever happens, as long as they can keep the game close, as long as they can, can, they can just be right there, the closer can help win the game to, to clear uh, the, the last inning and, and bring the team to victory. This idea that a great closer 
brings security, brings peace, and even hope to the baseball team because they know that they have one with the best stuff at the very end. With that idea, I believe we have that similar closer in Jesus Christ. We have this, this, this Christ who has come and who we're still waiting for, waiting for at the end to bring us into victory. The main point of my sermon is that we find hope, peace, and security waiting for the coming king. We, have, we find hope, peace, and security waiting for the coming king. Although in this time it might seem bleak, it might seem dark, we have a coming king that will be here. And hopefully when we lean on him, when we cling to him, when we look to him, we'll find security, we'll find peace, we'll find hope to continue moving on. My first point of the sermon is that we have directions to move while we wait for the coming king. In this passage, we see Jesus and his disciples, they're, they're coming towards Jerusalem. They're not quite in there yet in the beginning of this passage. And he begins to call his disciples and he gives them instruction on what to do. He tells them to, to specifically go into the village in front of you and immediately as you enter it, you will find a colt tied on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Say the Lord has need of it and will send it back here immediately. Jesus gives very specific instructions to his disciples as they go into the nearing Jerusalem. Jesus is, is going to come in triumphantly and in the midst of that he gives disciples specific instructions so that they can come together and reach that goal. So they can come together and reach uh, uh, into the city triumphantly. We saw that Jesus gave very specific instructions and even gave them instructions to say, if this does happen, if there were people to come and talk to you, if there were people to ask you why you're doing such things, say this. So we see that there's very specific instructions that Jesus gives. And I believe that even in our lives, we see very specific instructions from Jesus. Throughout Jesus' entire ministry, we see his teachings. Throughout the scriptures, we see this idea of everything pointing to Christ and how we're constantly called to point to him. We're even called to, to understand how do we live a holy life as one, together. As we look through the scriptures, we find that there is ways to, to have that holy life, that holy living. But do we take advantage of that? Do we understand that these teachings, do we understand that there are instructions for us to follow? I think one of the biggest questions um, many Christians ask is, 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 what do I do as a Christian? How do I live out my faith? How do I live that out? And, and for me, as a pastor, I can easily give you all the answers. But one thing I do understand and know is that it, rather than me simply just giving you all the answers, there's much to be uh, uh, learned and grown in as you dig into God's word because ultimately the directions I give you are from God they're God's directions for me just as they are for you and why not look to God's word why not look to the word of of the the all-knowing king the one who put the law together the one who put this word together to find that direction why not learn more about God as we seek to understand our directions and our call with that, during this time, I believe it's really important for us to understand that there's directions here that we can follow in the Word. For us as Christians, we have directions to follow, but are we following them? If I were to tell you the way you are to live your life is found in this Word, the way, the questions you have on how to approach certain topics, how to approach certain things in life, how to approach certain situations, even this circumstance. If I told you that the answers for those questions are all found in this word, how would you respond? I believe the wise thing to do would, would be to respond by seeking to read, seeking to understand, seeking to understand God through the word and understand why he's calling us to these different directions. I believe some of the simple directions that we find from God through Christ's teaching, through the direction that we've been given, is to read. Read this word. Read deeper. 
If you don't understand, if you're having trouble understanding, then pray. Pray to the Holy Spirit who helps you to understand God's word. Holy, the Holy Spirit, being one of the Trinity, knows God, is God, and is the best way for us to be able to really tap in and understand God through this word. So pray. Seek the Holy Spirit if you don't understand. Look for spiritual guidance from him. If you have even more questions, ask your pastors, ask myself, ask Pastor Chinsa. Ask us so that we can also guide you. Maybe even instead of giving you the direct answers, also point you to areas of scriptures to read to find those answers. Maybe we can give you further direction or guidance to learn and understand. But we see that in the midst of, of, of our walk in Christ, in the midst of understanding that this is Passion Week, that this is Palm Sunday, that this is Jesus coming in as King, we see that the King gives us direction to follow. In our lives, we have direction to follow. Are you following them? Do you know what directions you need to follow? Are you taking the time to understand those directions? The second point of my sermon is that we have preparations to do while we wait for the coming king. We have preparations to do while we wait for the coming king. As we understand that Jesus is coming, that Jesus is the coming king that will be here, one thing we do see is that we see Christians move. Right? Jesus' disciples, they hear the word, they, get, they hear the directions from Jesus, and from there they move. As they hear, they move in the same way and they see that God, the, the, the directions that Jesus gave fit and move exactly as he had explained. We see that there is reason to follow the directions that Jesus gave us. Because for the disciples, when, when they followed Jesus' commands, they saw that Jesus knew and they saw that Jesus moved as he knew. They saw that Jesus knew ahead of time what was going to happen. For us Christians, for us to be able to see how great God is, for us to be able to see how God knows the future, for us to be able to see and have even more reassurance and leaning on him and following on him, maybe we need to follow him. Maybe we need to follow the, the directions that he gives Rather than looking at it and trying to calculate what's right or wrong, what's too much and what's not, what's difficult, what's easy, maybe we need to take some time to look into actually following those directions and seeing what the outcome will be. Many times when Christ comes and, and tells us what to do, when we look at the Word of God and, and we hear what we're supposed to do as Christians, when we, when we come on Sundays and hear the message and we, we hear these words that we're supposed to do this and do that, Many times we just look at it and say that's either too hard or that can't be right or this or that and, and we don't take the time to just follow. We don't take the time to prepare. We don't take the time to prepare our hearts to understand and see that the coming king is coming. We don't take the time to see that the one that is coming is the king that will be here. Just because we're quarantined, it doesn't mean we stop working for God's kingdom. It just means that we need more intentionality and more creativity in following through on those directions. For us as Christians, just because we find ourselves in this certain situation, just because we find ourselves in certain parameters that we have to follow by the government and we get stuck, it doesn't mean that we just give up on everything. The, the disciples here, we see that they follow Jesus' directions to the T, and they saw blessings from it. They saw Jesus actually truly knowing what will happen, and in that, they got to see Jesus' greatness. For us, in this circumstance, in this situation, why don't we take some time to seek to follow God's directions and see what comes out of it? Another thing is that we're not always going to be ready to follow. Sometimes we understand that we, we, we believe that we can't follow certain directions or certain things that we're called to do because we're just not ready. Maybe we don't have the preparation. Maybe you've tried to read the Word and you just can't understand it. You don't get it. Maybe you're listening to sermons and you just don't get what you're supposed to do. 
is difficult. It's not easy. But if you take some time to actually seek to follow through, to try to learn, to try to ask questions, maybe if you effort, put effort in and try, you'll see that there are outcomes that can come out of it. But we're not always going to be ready. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2, the word says, Preach the word, be ready in season and out of season. Paul here, he's, he's writing to Timothy, a fellow minister of the word. He's writing to almost a close friend, as you would describe. But someone that he has more experience than teaching and guiding him in his ministry. He tells him to preach the word, be ready in season and out of season. For ministers, this is a call that we're supposed to be always ready, that we're not supposed to slack off, that we don't know what sort of situations will come about where we have to move in a certain way. I believe that's the kind of situation that we find ourselves now. Many pastors are struggling trying to figure out how to respond to this. How do we put, continue to, to, to preach to our church? How do we continue to lead our church? Some churches are just having difficulty with the logistics because they can't put all of the video and streaming and everything together. They have a hard time. They have a difficult time. But it's important for us to see that we should always be ready for what's to come. Not simply get to a point where we can be comfortable, but see that we're, we're being guided and spoken to and taught in a way where we can be ready no matter what. For us Christians, if I were to ask you, are you ready? If I were to ask you, are you ready? Can you give an emphatic yes, a yes without hesitation? Do you believe if God were to come and ask you right now, are you ready? Would you be able to answer that question confidently? This verse from 2 Timothy, it applies to pastors, it applies to ministers, but it's also important that for Christians that they're also ready. That they're also ready in season and out of season. We must be ready to move at any time. We must be able to be ready to speak out when we need to. Currently in this situation, it seems like we're out of season. A lot of things are out of whack. A lot of things are abnormal. Things aren't being done the way we are used to. In fact, many of you guys are probably home, finishing your classes online, doing your work online, right? We're locked in, we're trapped in. Can't go out outside as much. We can't go eat out. We can't uh, go and just meet friends. We can't come to church to gather, to, to have fellowship. A lot of our, our normal lives are, are, are being broken down. But someone who is ready in season and out of season, I believe that even though there are external changes to their lives, internally they are ready for whatever happens, that they can adjust and continue to move forward. Sure, the outside might change. Sure, your circumstances might change. But were you ready? I think this is a clear uh, point in our lives, where we can say, was I ready? Ask ourselves, was I ready? And prepare now. As Christians, uh, as, as, as humans, even in my lifetime, even in, in the lifetimes of many people that are older than us, if I ask the question of, of were you ready for this? Or were you expecting this? Or what kind of, have you ever been in this kind of situation? A lot of people I know have never been in this kind of circumstance, this kind of situation. They never thought we would live through some kind of situation like this. If I were to ask you the question, I believe you would say the same thing. Do you believe that you would have been in this kind of circumstance in your life? I for sure didn't think so. If I were to ask myself, was I ready? I think I could say yes. If I were to ask you guys, were you ready? What would your response be? Would it continue to make you think, Oh, I need to be ready for the next one. Oh, I need to start getting ready now so that I'm ready for the next. Are you preparing yourself? Are you doing the work? Are you listening and obeying Christ so that when you live through life, you start to see that you're preparing your heart to follow the king rather than following yourself for your own goals? Church, if we're not preparing our hearts to see Christ as the coming king, if we're not preparing our hearts to see that this is the word of God that we are to follow, the directions, 
if we're not working in ourselves in season and out of seasons to be ready for this, to put in the preparation for the coming king, then in any instance that the world changes, our hearts can move too. For us as Christians to stay secure and stable in our faith, we must be prepared at all times to know who the king is and to know that he is coming. So for us, it's an important question to ask, are you ready? Now this isn't to look back and say you, you, you messed up if you're not or if you weren't ready. But I believe this is a heart check. I believe the Spirit is speaking to us saying, let's be ready from now on. Let's put in the preparation to see, to understand that Christ is King, to understand the truth of Scripture, that Christ gives us teachings to understand who He is and to follow. To put in the preparation to align our hearts with the Word so that whatever happens in the world, that we won't be affected but we'll be looking to Christ, our King, and to Him alone. We'll find security in that. We see that when we put in the preparation, when we, when we, when we prevent ourselves from leaning on the world or looking to the world's joys, then we find that we can look to Christ and find security. I mean, with what we have, we have more than ever. We have technology where we can keep meeting, where we can record these sermons, where we can gather in house churches. We have all of these resources, but are we using them? We can continue to encourage one another. We can continue to pray for one another. We can continue to point each other to Christ, but are we doing those acts? Church, let us not grow lazy. Let us keep working for God's kingdom. Let us keep preparing our hearts for the coming King and working in season and out of season for this time. But one thing is that we will have to be creative. We'll have to be creative to figure out how we can work for His kingdom during this time. I've seen people uh, sewing uh, together face masks because a lot of face masks have been going out and a lot of hospitals and and places, uh, they they haven't been able to create those resources. I've seen people who are dropping off food to those that, are, that, that might have a hard time getting out, or even just loved ones, just show that they care and that they're there. Of course, in the bounds of social distancing. We can see opportunities where people are praying for one another. I, I saw a video where uh, there was a church who went out to a local hospital, and they were just playing worship music and just praying for that hospital. There was a video I saw of a bunch of uh, medical personnel that were were in the room, in a room in the hospital, preparing before their shift by praying to God and seeking for God's power to move. Are we doing these things? Are we finding ways? Are we being intentional and creative to live out in God's kingdom? I heard from a local church pastor that one of their members sought him out and, and, and tried to figure out a way that maybe she could help or love on the local body. Maybe gathering food for the elderly. What are we doing as a church? As a church, are we considering those things? Let us not be lazy. Let us be faithful. Let us follow. My final point of the sermon is that we have joy which leads to praise, knowing we have a coming king. We have joy which leads to praise, knowing we have a coming king. The passage right here, um, there's a point uh, in verse 9 where, where, where it quotes a psalm. And the psalm that it quotes is Psalm 118.26. And that's a part of a greater uh, group of psalms uh, from 113 to 118 called the Hallel Psalms. The Hallel Psalms. And, and these psalms represent worship and praise. These psalms are brought together and they're recited during, uh, they were recited during Jewish holidays as an act of praise and thanksgiving. Right here in Mark, he, he uses the word hallelujah, signifying that salvation is here. But one thing I want us to understand is that term didn't always mean that. The term actually started from this idea of, of, of crying out for salvation, desiring for salvation. For us as Christians, when we saw Christ, that 
phrase turns from desiring for salvation to then saying that salvation is here. It becomes worship. Charles Spurgeon, he writes, It is not possible for us to accept Christ as our Savior unless he also becomes our King. For a very large part of salvation consists in our being saved from sin's domination over us. And the only way in which we can be delivered from the mastery of Satan is by becoming subject to the mastery of Christ. This quote by Spurgeon helps us to understand that sin isn't, or that, that, that salvation isn't just salvation because we find joy. Salvation isn't just salvation because we find love, but salvation is salvation because we are being saved from sin. And the key aspect of being saved from sin is not just being forgiven for what we've sinned in. Because we see that there will be sin in the future. We see that we aren't completely clear of our own sin. But being saved from sin, finding salvation, means that we are broken from the mastery, the domination of sin over our lives. We're being broken from the mastery of Satan over our lives, and the only way to do that is to find a new master in Christ. A new master who is gracious and merciful, who is loving, who is steadfast. Allowing our lives to be mastered by Christ rather than Satan gives us a space, an opportunity to be saved and to live in life. When we understand that through salvation, that our worries, our struggles, our hardships, suffering, sin, that this coronavirus and this shelter and home quarantine that we're going through, that all of it will be lifted through Christ, Jesus, our King, that we understand the joy from Christ's coming. When we understand the joy from calling Christ our King, we understand the salvation that we're being, we've been given in Him, through Him. And when we understand that joy, then we understand that we cannot wait for the day. We cannot wait for the day when we meet Christ, our King, in full glory. Again, the main point of my message is that we find hope, peace, and security waiting for the coming King. In the midst of that, do we understand that we have direction from the Word of God for our lives? Do we understand that we need to be prepared, we need to be working for God's kingdom, that we can't become lazy and just sit around. Do we understand that for us, when we look to Christ, when we see that our King is coming, when we find joy, do we see that? Do we understand that we have the greatest closer in the world? That no matter how great the deficit we may believe our lives are in, that we can still sit back in peace knowing that we have victory in him. There is no deficit that is too great for Christ our King. In the midst of suffering, in the midst of this quarantine, this shelter and home, in the midst of the distance that's made within our church body, let us respond by understanding that there is still directives through the word of God for us to follow. Let us continue to read and know the word in our hearts, and as we learn, let us prepare ourselves for Christ's coming. Let us prepare the way. Let us be ready. Let us be doing the work. Let us not grow lazy, but understanding that whether we're in season or out, we're ready to move forward. Let us not become lazy because of our situation, but let us continue to prepare our hearts. Let us continue to move and work. Let's seek out community. Let's seek out the word in community, even in this time. Be intentional to encourage one another. Stay connected. Be creative in knowing how to love this, this world with Christ's love during this time. Let us come together as a church to come up with these ideas to move as one. Pursue God's kingdom work to draw others into the kingdom of God. And let us prepare our cloaks to place before Christ's path in worship to God, to rejoice in knowing that our King will come again. 
knowing that he will bring peace, stability, and joy in our lives. We know that Christ came, but let us also remember that he promises to come again. And in that moment when he does come, we will find that we have life everlasting. We have joy unending. And we have grace upon grace upon grace. Church, let's continue to seek after God. Let us know his direction, prepare the kingdom, and let us rejoice in worship of our coming King. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your word today. We pray that you would help us to understand and know so that we can prepare and that we can rejoice. Help us continue to seek you. As we go through this Passion Week, help us to remember all that you've gone through and help us to dedicate our lives to you. Help us to remember that you are the coming King that is entering, that will be coming. And let us treat you as such. Let us worship you as such. Lord, we thank you for your word today. We thank you for your grace. In Jesus' name we pray.
Catholic Church. Let's pray together. Father God, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for your steadfast love. And Father, we thank you that you are our King. Lord, in the midst of this, this time and the coronavirus and, and quarantine, and this time that we're separated, Father, we pray that we continue to encourage one another, reminding each other of your kingship and your mastery over our lives, knowing that we have a merciful and gracious king, a loving and wise king, and a king who is sovereign and in control of all things, and that as we know these truths about you, that we be able to follow that we'd be able to stand secure, that we'd be able to have hope during this time. Lord, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your steadfast love. We thank you for everything. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, church, for joining us. We pray that you guys will continue to stay healthy, uh, continue to stay safe. We pray that uh, you would seek us out and help us to show you or help us to love you in, in ways uh, during this time.